Hello everyone, myself Dr. Sriporna Shaha and in this particular playlist that is lectures on artificial intelligence. So far we have talked about different search techniques. So the different search techniques there only a single agent was present. But suppose in that search technique not a single agent but two agents are present over there. Then the scenario can be a competitive one as well. It can be a cooperative and a competitive. Cooperative means when the two agents are helping each other. Then the scenario becomes cooperative. But if the two agents are competing with each other, that means both of them are trying to reach the goal and they are in a competition. So that type of scenario is the adversarial start. That is the today's topic. That is the scenario now becomes adverse. That is it's not in the support of one particular agent but the total scenario becomes in an adversarial nature. So the search happens in that particular type of scenario that is the adversarial search. So in this particular adversarial search we need to have some typical AI assumptions. As I already told that these particular environments there are more than one agent should present. So that means it becomes a multi-agent environment. Now these two agents can not two that is the more than one number of agents can in a cooperative manner can work in a cooperative manner as well as in the competitive manner. And only if that multi-agent environment where the agents are in competition with each other that is a multi-agent competitive environment that are suitable for the adversarial search that is the agents whose actions alternate right now another type of assumption that can be that is a deterministic fully observable environments in which two agents act alternatively and utility values for each agent are equal and opposite of the other. So what is the utility value? So utility value is something by that we can get the result of one particular game suppose. Suppose one player that is there are suppose two teams are there playing uh, in competition with each other and one team wins and uh, so if one team wins it obvious that the other team is going to lose the scenario. So here you can calculate the utility value for each of the team. Now here each of the team is each of the agent. Now utility value for one agent are equal and opposite. Why the equal and opposite? That is if one is winning so we can give winning for one value and the losing can be given of minus one. So that is the mod of one is one and mod of minus one is one. That is the values are equal but opposite. So if it is one positive, one should be the negative. So that is why the utility values for each agent are equal and opposite of the other. Right? So utility values, by calculating the utility values, we can understand that what is the current scenario of each of the agent who is winning, who is losing the scenario in that particular scenario. So as the utility values are equal and opposite, so that makes the total solution a adversarial one so it creates the adversarial situation so as i told you it can be very uh, specific example for this type of scenarios are the gaming so suppose take the example of a chase so in a chase two players are in that game right so that is the if one player wins the game then the other player will necessarily lose it that is the utility value for one player is suppose 1 that is this player that player wins so if that value has been given 1 then the utility value for the other player who loses the game can be given as minus 1 and in game theory terms zero sum games of perfect information these are the examples of or that some assumptions that you need to maintain for the adversarial search now so as the earlier search technique whatever be the classical search techniques we have already discussed those search techniques that are based on the single agent concept so the single agent search technique that we have already discussed in the previous lecture videos versus the games why game game is one particular example where adversarial search happens there 
there in any type of game so whether there will be more than one agent is there the other side could be a human or a computer you can play against a computer then also there is a more than one agent is present and in game everyone wants to win the game so that is the scenario becomes in adversarial nature so single agent search versus games that we are going to talk about so in the single agent here the search is no adversary that is there is no adverse situation is there but for the games it is adversary the solution for the single agent search that is the heuristic method for finding the goal the heuristic techniques can find optimal solution and here the evolution function that you have already calculated or you have seen that how to calculate the values in the previous classes that is to estimate of cost from start to goal through given node examples of that single agent search are the path planning scheduling activities now let's come to the multi agent scenario that is the game here as already told it is the adversary and the solution is strategy you need to strategize your game and the strategy specifies move for every possible opponent reply here the optimality depends on opponent that is how you are going to win the optimal how the one particular scenario is optimal for you that depends on your opponent if you have a opponent who is very bad at that particular game so you are going to win the game very easily and vice versa now the time limits force an approximate solution here the evolution function that evaluate goodness of game position so you are playing the game and one particular time your position of the game or suppose it's a chess game so your uh, moves in one particular position that going to decide how you can checkmate the opponent so that is your positions of in that board of the chess that decide the goodness of the game position so by that you can calculate the evolution function and the examples of the games that is the multi agent that could be chess checkers or different types of other games as well so these are the difference between single agent search versus the game now in this games there are that is we are going to also create over here a search tree earlier we have uh, gone uh, we have generated different search trees here also we are going to generate search trees now there are in the search trees there are some concept one concept is pruning so pruning allows us portions of the search tree that makes no difference to the final choice so you have a long tree now in that long tree to decide the evolution function that we have already discussed in the last slide that is the evolution function that by which you can evaluate the goodness of game position now suppose in a long tree of the search tree that is generated in this multi agent scenario one particular portion of the tree does not have any effect on its parent node so you can prune that particular portion of the search tree so that is the pruning so you when you can prune those part of the tree that does not have any effect on the final choice that is the pruning and in this pruning will be discussed in details in the later videos another concept over here is evaluation function as already told it allow us to approximate the true utility of a state without doing a complete search so at one particular node position you can calculate its utility values by the evolution function and you need not to search for the complete tree to calculate the evolution function another thing is that if perfect information there is games such as bagamon that include an element of chance because all cards are not visible to each player so you are playing one particular game but you do not have uh, the information of about other player cards you cannot check the other player cards so that is you do not have the total information so that is you do not have the do not have the perfect information so it becomes the imperfect information now let's talk about how you can set up the game so it for the multi agent purpose 
So let us just simplify the scenario and assume that assume that there are only two players will be there. One player is named as Max, another is named as Min. So what is the Max is going to do? Max is going to always get the maximum value possible, and minimum aims is to get the minimum value possible. And we have here we have assumed that Max move fast and they take turns until the game is over. So Max will going to give its turn first, then Min, then Max, then Min. This way this will go until the game is over. And after the game has been completed, you can decide who wins, and the winner gets award, and the loser gets penalty. This is the total game setup. So there are two players. One name is Max, whose aim is to get the maximum value. Another player is Min, whose aim aim is to get the minimum value. Now, uh, games that uh, we are going to generate the search tree for the game setup. So games as such that we are going to talk now. How you can represent one particular game by the search tree? Here you can you need to understand the basic search tree concept. This particular concept that is the initial state or some concept that is terminal state, terminal test that has already been discussed in the previous lecture where that that was for the single agent search so in if it's a multi agent search as well those concepts stays there apart from there new some terms will be introduced to you so now we are going to talk about how to generate a search tree or how to do searching in a game so here what could be the initial state that specifies how the game is set up at the start here the player that defines which player has the move in a state that is which player is going to give its turn right now actions so what could be the actions that is different games have different actions so that is going to returns the set of legal moves in a state so these are the actions now the transition model that defines the result of a move and the terminal Test, that is you need to check whether the game is over then it becomes true and otherwise it is false so that is transition model is define the result of a move and the terminal test will be done at each particular node to check whether the game is over or not now in a game it could have more than one terminal states as well so those are the states where the game has ended they are the terminal states. Now the utility function. So utility function also called objective or payoff function. That is different names are there for the utility function. Objective or payoff function. It defines the final numeric value of a game that ends in terminal state. S that is suppose the terminal state is given a variable name that is S for a player P. That is if that particular player p wins then the value can be utility value can be plus 1 if the player loses the utility value can be minus 1 and if it's a draw then it would be a zero and different type of games you can done for calculate the utility function values that is can be tic tac toe very simple thing, or it could be a state as well so that is by calculating the utility function value you can get which player winning or which player has been lost the game so this is the partial game tree for tic tac toe. So this is one just simple example of the game tic tac toe. So what happens in this particular game? One player is going to give cross sign, and that player is going to give the zero sign. Now suppose we have assumed that is the max who is going to give the cross sign, and mean is going to give the zero sign. Now in these three cross three block. Each particular thing, these are the nodes. These nodes define the game states. And the edges, edges are the moves. Right? So, what a first turn? First turn, we have already told, first turn will be given by the max player. So, max is going to give the cross sign. So, max can give cross sign in any of the nine position. So, any of the nine position, 
suppose max can give any of the time so that is nine children note can be possible from the initial state now after max giving one cross position what will be the next next will be the mean turn and what mean can give mean can give a zero value that is zero it can give in any particular position now suppose max has been given cross over here so that is how many tiles you have left eight tiles you have left now mean can give zero in any of the position of the eight so if mean can give any position that means it this particular node have can have eight different children similarly each of the other the children in this particular level each of them when they becomes the parent node they can have another eight children so as it's not possible to show you the complete graph so we have been given a partial game tree so likewise the game goes on now these are the terminal states right so in that term why there's terminal state just check here the there is a line can be drawn over here so as the line can be drawn over here so it's the uh, uh, it means that mean has win the game so as mean has been given win so we have given the utility value as minus one that is uh, it symbolizes that max has lose, lost the game whenever you are calculating the utility value it will be based on one player so we are calculating the utility value considering the max player so max has lost the game so as max has lost the game so that means mean is win and the max lost that means the utility value becomes minus 1 now here no other value can be given over here that is all the positions of the tic tac toe board has been filled up so then it's the draw condition so utility value is zero and here the max is winning so utility value is plus 1 so this is how the utility values has been calculated with respect to max player now another thing is that to play game tree right here the idea is to choose a move to a position with the highest mini max value so what is the mini max value that we are going to talk about now this particular tree is one move tree consisting of two half moves each of which is called a ply so that is why it's a two ply as there are two ply are there and what is a ply that is uh, this two half right and this that is a triangular shape nodes you can take over here these are for the max turn that is the triangular nodes are max nodes in p it is max turn to moon and the inverted triangle that are the nodes are min turn right? so this is first it will be a max turn so max is suppose the node name is a then it can have three different actions a1 a2 a3 now suppose after giving the a1 action in the a node it goes to the b with node so that is the b node so it's now min turn min can have the required action b1 b2 b3 so it becomes this particular thing similarly here the actions could be c1 c2 c3 and here the actions for the mean could be d1 d2 d3 right so these are the edges are the actions and note this is the game state right now the terminal nodes show the utility values for max already discussed that we are going to calculate the utility values based on max and the other nodes are labeled with their mini max value so what is the mini max value so first the utility values has been given at this position so these values so 3 12 8 2 4 6 14 52 these are the utility values for max now just take among these three values what is the minimum value minimum value is 3 and mean mean aim is to get always the minimum value so that means 3 that is 3 12 8 three values are there and the minimum is the 3 so mean value becomes over here is 3 similarly between 2 4 6 minimum value is 
and mean aim is to get the minimum value. So it value becomes so over here is two. Now the between fourteen five and two minimum value is two, and mean aim is to get the minimum value. So here the value becomes two. Now. Among these three values, that is three, two, two, what is max aim? Max aim to get the maximum of these three values. So max will be three values. So the game has been played in this scenario. But now we are calculating the minimum, mini max values from the opposite direction by taking the utility values. We are moving up in the tree and calculating the mini max values. So this is the scenario right now. So what will be the thing? That is, max best move will be the state with highest minimax value, and means best move will be state with the lowest minimax value. So what is that? So max uh, aim is to get the highest minimax value. So just take over here. That is three. These are the three minimax values, right? So among the three minimax values, what is max going to do? Max is going to do to take the highest of the minimax values. So, what is the highest value becomes between the three values? Three is the highest minimax value. So, what will be the max move? Max move will be this, right? So, from A state, you have already moved to the B state. Now, among these three values, what is the minimum minimum value? That is, the three is the minimum value, and mean mean aim is to get the minimum value. So it will be this particular move. So this is how that game should be played by the max and mean based on the utility values. Next, the concept that mini max concept will be explained in uh, the concept of the values in a, another example. So this is known as mini maxing that we have already discussed. That is a mini max. So now have you have the suppose these conditions that is. Your move that is suppose you are the max player and there is a, another player who will choose to is the min player so that is going to choose, will choose the smaller number so that is you are the max player so you will be give your turn first and the opponent is the min player so opponent is going to choose the smaller value and in the terminal node these are the values present over here now check what you and your opponent will and so now. If you move left, your opponent will choose three. So here is the initial state, and now you have to give your move. So as you are going to give your move, you can go towards the left side as well as towards the right side. Now, if you come or move towards the left side, so will be coming to this particular state. In this particular state, if you come over here, what your opponent will do? Opponent will. The minimum value, so minimum is the three. So opponent will take this particular value. So this value will be your the value you can get that is the three. Now, if you move the right, so that is you have suppose come over here right. So now your opponent will choose the smaller number. So smaller number is minus eight. So this is a scenario. So you had therefore have two choices. Between three and minus eight, and what you are going to do? You are going to take the maximum value that is the three over here. So you should move left and play as so. That is this you should do. Why? Then only you are going to get three values. So if you have taken this particular side of the action, then your value over here will be minus eight, and your aim is to get the maximum value. So you should play the game in this direction. Right, so your move will be along the left side. Now, in this minimax algorithm, it's a complete one. Uh, if the tree is finite, it is optimal against a rational opponent. And these are the values for the time complexity and the space complexity, where the maximum depth is a, is denoted by m, and legal moves at each point is denoted by b. So this is the Minimax algorithm. Now, in this minimax search, there could be some practical problem. What could be the? That is, if the number of game states is exponentially large, and in ex exponential in the number of moves, so we have a huge tree. So then, the solution it could be 
that is the you not possible for you to examine every note as it's a huge tree so you in that huge tree if you going to calculate the minimax values after looking the terminal nodes is going to take you a exponential amount of time so that is the time complexity becomes very high so it's not possible for you to examine each and every node so the solution will be a pruning that is the remove the branches that do not influence the final decision this is the problem with minimax search from the next class we are going to talk about how to do this pruning till now i hope you have enjoyed this particular lecture on the introduction of the alpha serial search and happy studying